Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chansom. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday, the 12th of October. Two Lashkar terrorists neutralized an encounter in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Anger mounts against Pakistan's attempt to change Gilgit Baltistan's status. An Afghan peace official says early withdrawal of US troops will have consequences. And now for all the details. At least two terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba terror group were neutralized on Monday in an encounter with security forces in India's Jammu and Kashmir. A senior official said one of the slain terrorists was involved in recent attacks on India's paramilitary Central Reserve Police Force in which three personnel lost their lives. At least two terrorists belonging to Pakistan-based lashkar e taiba terror group were neutralized in an encounter with security forces in Rambak area of Srinagar city, the summer capital of India's Jammu and Kashmir, on Monday. The encounter broke as security forces had launched a cordon and search operation in the early hours of Monday after receiving specific inputs about the presence of terrorists, police said. A senior police official informed one of the slain terrorists was involved in three recent attacks on India's paramilitary Central Reserve Police Force, in which three personnel lost their lives. Today's operation is special that there is a Lashkar's top commander, Saifullah, who is Pakistan, who is dead. And the Saifullah, who is the According to Jammu and Kashmir Police, setting records this year, there have been 75 successful operations in which 180 terrorists have been neutralized in the Union territory. India accuses neighboring Pakistan of involvement in terrorist activities in its Kashmir Valley and beyond. New Delhi also describes it as a safe haven for terrorists where they get trained and are provided weapons. The air quality in India's national capital region was recorded in the poor category on Monday morning with the beginning of stubble burning in some neighbouring states. Experts have warned that extreme air pollution in Delhi during winter can aggravate the COVID-19 pandemic. India's capital, New Delhi, woke up to poor air quality on Monday with concentration of fine particulate matter PM2.5 and PM10 increasing to the highest recorded levels this season so far. Delhi's air quality had turned poor last week, the first time since June 29 with the Central Pollution Control Board recording a 24-hour average AQI air quality index of 215. The Ministry of Earth Sciences Air Quality Monitor suffers said as many as 448 farm fires were observed in Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh states, which impacted Delhi's air quality on Sunday. However, the wind direction will change in coming days and the impact of farm fires will reduce, it said. With national capital region bracing for months of poor air quality, experts have warned that high levels of air pollution can aggravate the COVID-19 pandemic. India's Supreme Court mandated anti-pollution authority EPCA has earlier said that graded response action plan to tackle air pollution in Delhi and national capital region will come into force from October 15. Moving on, 
Anger is mounting high in Pakistan's illegally occupied territories over attempts to change the legal status of Gilgit Baltistan in violation of UN resolutions. A protest was held in Pakistan administered Kashmir on Sunday against the proposed move and over Islamabad's oppressive policies. A protest was held in Pakistan administered Kashmir on Sunday against Islamabad's proposed move to turn Gilgit Baltistan into its fifth province. Anger is mounting high in the illegally occupied territories against Pakistan's attempts to change the legal status of the region along with holding elections in November in violation of the UN resolutions. The protesters raised voices against policies of successive Pakistani governments and denial of fundamental rights to people in the region. Meanwhile, protests have also continued in Gilgit Baltistan against the proposed move and to demand release of political activists in detention centers of Pakistani state and its army. Activists have expressed concern that China has been lobbying Pakistan to bring Gilgit Baltistan under its legal jurisdiction to protect the investments in the region, which are part of CPEC, the China Pakistan Economic Corridor. Regular protests have been witnessed in Gilgit Baltistan over alleged human rights violations by Pakistani forces to muzzle dissent in the region against the CPEC. Citing that Pakistan's measures against money laundering and terror financing are not yet sufficient to justify a re-rating, a regional affiliate of Financial Action Task Force on Monday retained the country on its enhanced follow-up list. This comes as a virtual meeting of the Financial Action Task Force is scheduled to be held later this month, which will decide on Pakistan's grey list status. A regional affiliate of Financial Action Task Force or FATF on Monday retained Pakistan on its enhanced follow-up list, saying that the country's measures against money laundering and terror financing are not yet sufficient to justify a re-rating. Enhanced follow-up is an intensive process of correction that deals with members with significant deficiencies. This development came as a virtual meeting of FATF, the Paris-based global money laundering and terrorist financing watchdog is scheduled to be held later this month, which will decide on Pakistan's grey list status. To push a narrative favoring Pakistan with US President Donald Trump's administration, Islamabad has reportedly also hired a top lobbyist firm to get bailed out of the Club of Nations on the grey list. Pakistan has been under pressure to prove action taken against UN proscribed terrorists like Maulana Masood Azhar, Hafiz Saeed as well as international terror organizations like Al-Qaeda, Jashe Mohammed, Lashkar-e Taiba and Haqqani Network. The U.S. had earlier dismissed Pakistan's claims of acting against these individuals and organizations. In news from Afghanistan, senior Afghan peace official Abdullah Abdullah has said that the premature withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan will leave a power vacuum and impact the security situation. The United States has said it would reduce its forces in Afghanistan to 2,500 by early next year. Chairman of High Council for National Reconciliation in Afghanistan, Abdullah Abdullah, has said that a premature withdrawal of U.S. troops from Afghanistan will leave a power vacuum and leave an impact on the security situation. Abdullah made the remarks in an interview to news agency ANI during his official visit to India, days after U.S. President Donald Trump said all U.S. troops in Afghanistan should be home by Christmas. U.S. officials have said Washington would reduce its forces in Afghanistan to 2,500 by early next year. A landmark U.S. Taliban deal in February had said foreign forces would leave Afghanistan by May 2021 in exchange for counter-terrorism guarantees from the Taliban. Before uh, establishment of peace or, or progress in the negotiations, uh, if uh, a premature withdrawal takes place, uh, there is no doubt that it will leave some vacuum behind and that will have some impact on the security situation. But that will not uh, mean one side prevailing over, over the other, that will, that will not happen. Amid efforts for direct talks between the Taliban and the Afghan government in Doha, the war shows no sign of ending. 
Scores of Afghan soldiers and Taliban fighters have been killed in clashes in recent weeks. Dozens of civilians have also died. In news from Bangladesh, in the wake of unprecedented country-wide anger over a series of rapes and sexual assaults recently, Bangladesh government on Monday approved a proposal for a stringent punishment for rapists. Law Minister Anusul Haq said the proposed law stipulates that the maximum punishment is death penalty for the sex offenders. Protests rocked Bangladesh over the weekend as hundreds took to the streets to demand justice after a series of rapes and sexual assaults that have spurred the government to seek capital punishment for offenders. In capital Dhaka and elsewhere, people of all ages chanted and marched carrying placards with messages such as show no mercy to rapists. The demonstrations were sparked by a video of a group of men stripping and attacking a woman for almost half an hour in the southeastern district of Naukali. Meanwhile, the Bangladeshi government on Monday approved the proposal for stringent punishment for rapists. The proposal was approved in principle at a cabinet meeting with Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. Country's law minister Anishul Hoog told journalists the proposed law stipulates that the maximum punishment is death penalty for the sex offenders. Bangladeshi President Abdul Hamid will now have to promulgate an ordinance increasing the punishment of rapists from the existing life term to death. Moving on to news from Nepal. As many as 18 lawmakers from Nepal's Karnali Provincial Assembly registered a no-confidence motion against Chief Minister Mahendra Bahadur Shahi. The lawmakers stated that Shahi, also a parliamentary party leader from ruling Nepal Communist Party or NCP, is incapable of leading both the party and the provincial government. The move of the 18 NCP lawmakers close to Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli against Shahi who is close to Chairman Pushpa Kamal Dahal comes at a time when both the leaders are working on to accomplish the remaining task of the party's unity. Sunday's move is likely to further ignite the intra-party conflict within the ruling NCP. Tourist influx in India's northern Agra city has increased 25 to 30 percent since last month. Officials have said after the famed Mughal era monument Taj Mahal, was reopened for public in September amid coronavirus pandemic. Local businesses dependent on tourism are happy with the turn-up. Tourist influx in India's northern Agra city has increased 25 to 30 percent since last month, officials said on Sunday, after the world-famous Mughal era monument Taj Mahal was reopened for public in September. Daily visitor numbers to the famed Monument to Love are kept at 5,000 versus an average of 20,000 before the pandemic. Tickets are only being sold online. An official of the Archaeological Survey of India said that generally all tickets to the Taj Mahal are being sold every day and other monuments in the city are also witnessing a turn up. Anishit Rup se jab Taj Mahal apne khola tha ya Anishmarak jab khole the uski tulla mein hum dekhe to pichle hafte mein दशकों में 25 से 30 प्रतिशत की बढ़ोतरी हुई है और जो हमारी लिमिट है टिकटों की वो लगभग ताजमहल में तो पूरी हो जा रही है अन्य जगहों पर भी दर्शक निरंतर बढ़ते चले जा रहे हैं लोकल बिजनेसेस इन आगरा दैट आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन टूरिज्म आर हैप्पी विद द टर्न अप फेस विद द डीपेस्ट इकोनॉमिक कॉन्ट्रैक्शन इन डेकेड्स द इंडियन गवर्नमेंट इज पुशिंग टू फ्री अप वायरस कर्व्स इवन एज कोरोना वायरस टैली हैज क्रॉस द 7 मिलियन मार्क Tourism contributed about $240 billion or 9.2% of India's gross domestic product in 2018, employing more than 42 million people, World Travel and Tourism Council data shows. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. 
subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button